It's the sequel that everyone wanted, but instead we got a remake. Hello, and welcome to the most controversial movie of 2016, Ghostbusters. Now, the biggest question that a lot of people have been not been asking about this remake is, does it honor the original one? Can we actually get behind this new team of Ghost Hunters as we did with the original crew? I say, hell no to the first, and yes to the second. Now, this movie has definitely a crap load of problems with this movie, and it cannot be overlooked. So before we get into the cons, I'll give you my pros. The things I like about this movie was the team. Uh, Melissa McCarthy, uh, Kristen Wiig, Leslie Jones, and Kate McKinnon were all good for their respective roles. Uh, the standouts for me were obviously Leslie Jones, that she brought a lot of energy to the role. Well, uh, Kate McKinnon, um, this character brought something uh, very unique to a female character that uh, we don't normally see in these uh, big budget movies. I thought that was something, uh, something that should be very highlighted. Uh, Melissa McCarthy, um, she was very good, very subtle, subtle acting from her. She didn't went like over the top, like like crazy, like she intends to do in her, and she did in Bridesmaids and uh, in the Heat and uh, in Spy. But she was very um, not mellow, but more um, reserved in this one, and that's something uh, was very refreshing from to see from her. Um, Kristen Wiig, I would say she she did all right, but she's uh, she's kind of like the weakest of the four. I'll get into that. And the cons. Uh, the other thing I liked uh, was um, the ghosts. Uh, you know, when we saw them in the trailer, they looked like crap. They look like uh, like Eddie Murphy's haunted mansion. They look like uh, something from the live action Scooby Doo movies. They look plain awful. But actually, seeing them in the, in the movie, it looks like they actually finished the the rendering of the special effects, and they actually look pretty good, decent. Uh, that weird uh, ghost in the conscious scene uh, look look pretty good. Uh, I thought he still kind of looks like a, a Scooby Doo monster, but aside from that, uh, it looked pretty good. Uh, especially the ghost in the when you get to the Times Square fight scene, that was b very good. I liked. Uh, the only thing uh, else I could think of that I really liked about this movie was seeing uh, new ghost gadgets. Um, despite that, the f pro Proton packs in this movie uh, don't measure up to the original one, but I like some of the the new toys that um, Kate McKinnon's character, or as I prefer to call her, the, the female Egon. And that's pretty much all I can think of for for the pros of this movie. So now on to the best part, the cons. Uh, let's start out with the biggest issue with this movie: the directing and the writing of this movie. Paul Feig, I still don't get how how you dropped the ball in this movie. I just don't get this. Get this. Bridesmaid was good. The Heat was good. Spy was good. He actually could make good movies, but for some reason that instead of trying to prove the the haters and naysayers wrong, he decided to make a crappy movie, a horribly paced film with god awful writing. But he should not be taken to blame because he co-wrote this movie, and this is where the biggest problem with this movie. Was first of all, the writing. It looks like it's going to be 2016, the year of bad writing. TMT, out of shadows, god awful hot, bad writing. Independence Day, resurgence, bad writing. B vs. S, bad writing. I swear, freaking God, it seems like the studios these days are more concerned about uh, special effects and everything else, but instead of actually making a good, coherent story, but no. They say, oh, you know. It's Batman and Superman. It's Ghostbusters. Like, uh, uh, let's let let's throw some ghosts. Let's put some special effects. Let's pay let's pay like a uh, crap load of money, money, and 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 we'll make big money. No, this this is the biggest freaking issue that I have with these freaking freaking studios is that they seem to, that they're relying on nostalgia, but as the only thing that would warrant people to actually pay top dollar to see a movie now. Nostalgia is a very powerful aphrodisiac to uh, us, um, to us fans. Like we just saw what happened with Jurassic World. That's something that, but this is ridiculous. Like, like bad writing. I I can't possibly believe it. Let's start. Let's start with the other thing that ties into this bad writing. The villain. Oh my God, this villain sucked. 
some weirdo fool with no character development whatsoever. Bogodime with even more useless point of the story was basically his whole purpose was I don't like humans. Or whatever nonsense it was. That, that, that. And now let's start off with, with the thing that most likely this movie is going to get a lot of flack for. Kevin. Yes? Why, Hemsworth? Why? Why? I keep asking. Why? Why? You know, we want you to, to, to succeed in your film career outside of the Thor movies. And yet, you did not, like, for, you read the script. How could you knew that your character was as dumb as a freaking doornail? Like, really, this is not, not a slight that people say, oh, oh, if you don't like this movie, you're, you're sexist. Um, now, this is the issue with the problem with uh, movies that, that try to champion feminists. And they don't do it in a positive way. They do it in a very crappy way. Now, you have the only one male character, uh, Kevin, who is supposed to be the, the male version of Janine. Janine and... Um, Basically, you turn him as uh, as dumb as crap. I keep repeating this: dumb as crap, crap. You know, it's one thing to, I thought he was gonna be like uh, this goofy uh, nerd kind of a klutz, klutz, and then like if somehow this movie actually gets a sequel, we'll see him actually don on the jumpsuit and put on a full time pack and uh, back up our uh, our female heroes but it was uh now the other thing I wanted to talk about that I mentioned earlier um, was uh, Kristen Wiig's uh, character now she's technically supposed to be the the female Peter Venkman and she basically was basically the, the weakest thing uh, as you know people who are familiar with uh, Venkman's character he was kinda like uh, the smooth talking um, basically BSer basically like talks his way out of situations or flirts with girls, and I thought Kristen Wiig was going to be um, the female version of that, and but it kind of made her like very muted and um, kind of dull. I was expecting more from her. That's the only gripe I had about with Kristen Wiig, his character. Uh, let's start with another bad thing about this movie: uh, the cameos. Oh my God! Let's bring back the original cast and not and not had them as their characters as they were in the original movie especially Bill Murray's character okay Bill Murray if somehow you are actually watching this for the love of God what the hell's wrong with you? you for years you've been against the idea of coming back to the movie and third goes was this movie but yet you had enough screen time to show up for this remake and you weren't even Peter Beckman you were some weird old, old crutch with Kane Kane uh, I don't get into that anymore and now, lastly, the biggest con of this entire remake, and the reason why there's so much hate for this, and I'm not the only one who agrees with this. I think this movie could have done a lot more better, and a lot more would have been a lot more forgiving if they actually tied this movie to the original Ghostbusters. Like, I, from people who work, people from all over the internet, well, I agreed that if you had tied this to the original, it would not receive the kind of hate that's getting. And that's something that I personally think that you could have the original Ghostbusters had some semblance of tie-in to the original team. Because remember, this is a property that I too have loved when I, when I was a little kid, even though I wasn't even born when this movie came out. But I still love the original cartoon. Look, I'm even wearing the plastic t-shirt for this review. So, um, overall, I would say... Um, this movie, if I were to give this score a 1 for 10, I would say this movie is um, a 5. I still say uh, there is still some glimmer of hope, hope for this new team of Ghostbusters, but I highly doubt it. But who oh no, knows? Stranger things have happened. Um, now, now, do I think that you should uh, rush to see this on opening weekend? No. Now, allow me to uh, paraphrase um, another great classic movie, a character known as Michelangelo. Forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for a crappy ass movie. So, those are my thoughts, and thank you for watching. And, oh wait, before, before I end this, now, now apparently, uh, sitting on the internet, that if I somehow 
hate this movie, I'm a sexist pig. Pig. If I like this movie, I'm being bowed off by something. So, I'll let you guys decide in the comic section whether or not I'm a sexist or a sellout. So, bye.